Subtrees are a way to reuse existing behavior within your behavior tree. There are a variety of use cases for subtrees and let's take a look at them in this video. So I, I have a new scene here uh, that just has a capsule with a nav mesh agent and then a nav mesh is baked into this plane. If we look at the behavior tree, it's a very simple behavior tree where just a sequence, a log task, and the log task, let's say we have, we wanted to say wandering, and then we have this wander task from the movement pack. Well, if I go ahead and hit play, we will see the agent starting to wander. And now, yeah, the agent is wandering, so nothing exciting here. But let's say that we have a use case where instead of just one agent, we want to have multiple agents. I could create a prefab of this agent and then have the behavior tree on that prefab, or I could use subtrees. It kind of just depends on your specific situation for what you want to do. But with subtrees, we're, we're going to take a look at that. And let me go ahead and create a new subtree by just hitting this little export button. And then it'll ask, where do I want to save it? I'm just going to save it in the assets folder. And now this subtree is created right here. All right, so that's, that's good. Let me go ahead and remove all the nodes from this, from this behavior tree. And I'm just gonna select them all and hit delete. So now we have a completely empty behavior tree with no subtree. But if I click on this behavior tree asset right here, um, this was the one that was created and we can see we have our original tree. So just to show that we're not referencing any tree at all, I'm gonna hit play and we will get no functionality. So yeah, no functionality, so everything looks good. All right, we are not referencing anything within the subtree, but let's go ahead and let's, let's create a prefab out of this agent, just because we want to have multiple uh, agents in the scene. So now I'm just gonna drag a new instance of that prefab in, and now we have two different agents. On this prefab object, I'm going to reference the subtree that we had just created. So now if I look, I am editing this, or I, I have the subtree referenced. Behavior Designer, the window will automatically show you the subtree that is currently being referenced under this subtree field. And then the little title says editing subtree. So if, for example, let's, let's go up to this agent. And if I, you can see I'm still editing the subtree. So let's just drag this task around a little bit. And if I look at this other agent, we should see that the task is also dragged around a little bit. And that is because I am editing the actual subtree scriptable object rather than anything on this prefab instance. So now if I hit play, we should see both the agent and agent one, uh, I mean, doing the same behavior tree, having the same behavior. So let's go ahead and hit play. And now we have two different agents. Uh, they are an instance, they are their own instance. So the fields are not shared in between the two different agents and that's why they're going in different wander directions. So everything is working great. Now, now I can just edit one instance of the behavior tree instead of needing to add, edit multiple ones for each agent. All right, let's take this one step further and let's say that instead of uh, just a few agents, Let's say that you have many agents and they're spawning in and out and being enabled and disabled and all that good stuff. Well, what you can do is let's, let's say that you have, I don't know, 50 agents, but at any one time, only 20 of them may actually be active. Well, you can uh, deserialize and kind of initialize the subtree for use and then pool those subtrees for kind of the most performance, the best performance, because if you have 50 different agents and they're not all active at the same time, then you don't need 50 different behavior tree instances. Instead, you could have the maximum number of behavior tree instances that are that's enabled at any one time, and in this case, it's 20. What you could also do is also have the tree deserialize during a loading screen so that the users never even notice any object instantiation or anything like that. So you can use this pooling script that I'm about to show in order to kind of cover both of those use cases. So I have a little UI set up where, let me go ahead and enable it. We just have this little spawn button. I need to do a little bit to set it up. The first thing that I want to do is delete these guys right here. 
And under the canvas, I have this spawner component, which I will show in a moment, but I'm just going to assign the references. So um, I'm assigning these, the prefab that we created, the subtree that we created, and then the pool size. On this prefab, let me go ahead and make sure I remove the subtree because we do not want any, the, any subtree to be initialized without it first being pooled. So now that we've done that, let's go ahead and take a look at this uh, spawner script. And I'll drag that into the window and you can see we have a pretty, it's a very basic script, but here is where the magic happens for the subtrees. So I had specified how large the pool should be. And so I am creating a new array of subtrees and then I'm instantiating those uh, single subtree and then I'm deserializing it. What this will do is it will get this subtree ready to be used and now, now I can use it within the game. So I have a spawner which will just be hooked up to a button and when I press the spawn button, I am getting the behavior tree component that is attached to the prefab and I'm assigning the subtree that has already been deserialized. I'm then going to increment the index just so that the next time an agent is spawned, they will not reuse the same subtree. So this is a very basic script, but it's extremely powerful in allowing you to, yeah, have multiple agents that are despawned or d disabled, but then you want to have kind of, <clears throat> kind of a subset of subtrees that are used. So let me just go ahead and show it in action. I'm not doing the actual despawning, but the concept is the exact same. So we'll go ahead and hit play. And there are no, nothing going on right now, which is good because I haven't hit the spawn button yet. So now when I hit spawn, we should see one agent already in the, or one agent kind of wandering around. Actually, before we do that, um, let me go ahead and put this in debug mode just so that we can see the subtree pool. And we can see the five different instances of the subtree. And these five instances have already been deserialized. So they're ready to go. So as soon as I hit spawn, we're going to get one guy that is just kind of moving around. Um, and then I'll do the same thing again. And I again, and can do it up to five times because I only have five that can be enabled at one time. But yeah, they're, they're each using their own already deserialized subtree. So that's just kind of an efficient way to have multiple agents that are enabled or disabled. All right, the next thing that I want to look at is the subtree reference. The subtree reference is a task within Behavior Designer that allows you to reference other subtrees within your behavior tree. There is no limit to the number of subtrees that you can reference, but you cannot have a cyclic reference. So for example, subtree A cannot reference subtree B, while subtree B then references subtree A. That's a cycle and that doesn't work in behavior trees. All right, so I have opened up the subtree sample scene. Um, and let me go ahead, yeah, so this subtree sample scene right here. And in this, we have one behavior tree on the Atlas game object. And let me go ahead and show that behavior tree. So this behavior tree is actually a subtree. You can see I'm editing the subtree. And if I look at the behavior tree component, you'll see that we have this reference to subtrees underscore main. Well, subtree underscore main has a reference has the, well, it has these two subtree reference tasks. If I look at the task, I'm going to click on one of them, and you can see it's referencing subtrees craft. And then if I click on the other one, I'm going to look at subtrees craft. Okay. Well, what's going on here? So in this case, for this sample scene, I want to reuse existing behavior on one behavior tree, and that is why I'm using subtrees. So this behavior tree on the left. If we look at it, we have these things called overridden variables. And the very first uh, variable is called resources. Resources comes from the subtree's craft behavior tree. And if I go ahead and click on, or if I double click on the task, it will automatically open up the reference subtree. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. And you can see now I'm in the subtree's craft behavior tree. And also if I show it in the project view, it, it has it selected. So if I look at it, you can see on the left, here are all my different shared variables. Well, this resources variable is the one that I was talking about earlier, and this resources is a game object array. Well, 
these subtrees, they are scriptable objects. So they live in the project world. And, the, and according to kind of the Unity specification, project level assets cannot reference scene level assets. So I'm going to kind of get around that by using these subtree overrides. So let me go back to the Atlas game object and I'll click on this original task. So we see this overridden variable called resources and this is the source variable. The override variable in this case is juice resources. Well, juice resources comes from the actual behavior tree component that is within the scene. So if I scroll down, you can see I have this juice resources. And if I look at this graph here, we see the same juice resources object. These graphed shared variables, these actually do not belong or are not living within the subtree. They are, or in this case, they're not living within the subtree's main subtree. Even though this subtree is selected, the, the variables here shown in the graph trap uh, reference the variables within the actual behavior tree component. And that is exactly why I can reference scene level objects. So in this case, if I select the very first object, it's called carrots, and you can see carrots lives in the scene. So I am referencing a scene level object by specifying a subtree overridden variable. And let's go ahead and hit play just so we can kind of see how it works. Well, well, first off, you can see I, I have multiple variables that are overridden. And on the left, I'm overriding all the different juice resources. And then on the right, I'm overriding all the different club resources. Well, this same behavior tree is being used, except there are different variables. So on the left, I'm going to be crafting this juice. And then on the right, I'm going to be crafting the club. So let's go ahead and hit play. And once Unity starts, you can see that it's loaded in the subtrees. So here is the craft subtree, and then the exact same subtree is right here. Well, now the right side of this task is being, or the subtree is being run because of this random selector. And let's see, if we take a look at this iterator, this iterator is going to go through all the different resources. In the case, this case, since we are on the club side, uh, the resources are wood and rocks. And if we can see this agent is seeking towards the resource uh, specified right here. And then if we actually look at the resource, let's see, where is that variable? So this resource variable right here is specified wood. So the agent is moving towards the, the target. So that is all working well. All right, let's take this one step further. Let's say that you have a situation where you have a behavior tree agent and this behavior tree agent can have different, completely different functionalities. So in this example, this is the runtime behavior scene. In this example, we have this agent who is doing training in order to prepare for the sparring match. So he's lifting some weights and punching a heavy bag. Well, after he's done training, he then gets to spar against this other agent. Well, the, the sparring is completely different from the training. So I could create a behavior tree where the, maybe the left branch has the agent doing the actual training and then the right branch has the agent doing the actual sparring. Or I could completely swap out the functionality within the subtree. And I can do this at runtime by calling a method called reevaluate subtree references. I'll, I'll show that in a bit. But let's go ahead and first take a look at the behavior tree. So I have this agent here. And if we look at the behavior tree, there's a couple of different event nodes, but let's, let's focus on this one right here. And we have this new task called subtree reference selector. Well, the subtree reference selector is a subclass of the subtree reference class. So let's go ahead and just edit that script real quick so we can take a look at it. And I have it right here. So if I look at subtree reference, this is the task that we were looking at before. It just has this array of subtrees and then an array of variables that should be overridden. Well, the subtree reference extends that, or the subtree reference selector extends that by selecting one specific subtree within the subtree list. So you can see we have this shared variable called index and it will, uh, when it gets evaluated, this evaluate subtree method is called when the subtree reference task is evaluated. 
and it will evaluate to whatever index value is specified. Now the selection, it does require an array of subtrees, so I'm just creating this new array and assigning it, and now we're good to go. So on the very first run, index is going to be zero, so it's going to take the, val the zeroth element, which in this case will be the training subtree, and return the training subtree. Well, after the agent is done training, it's then time to spar, and so we will uh, reevaluate, and at that point, index will be a value of one, and that reevaluation value will point to the sparring subtree. I think we call it fight in the demo scenes. So let's go ahead and take a look at an example of this, and then I will show the actual code for how that is executed. If I go ahead and hit play, we should first see this agent here call uh, doing his training, and then this behavior tree will also just be the, the training part. It will not be the fighting part. Okay, so we hit pause, and here is that specific behavior tree. Um, we can see the, the agent is lifting weights right now, and then if we want to play for a little bit, it'll eventually go to uh, the heavy bag. And so now he's punching, and it just repeats forever. So this, this repeater just repeats forever. So that's how this, uh, this original uh, training behavior tree is set up. Now if I go and hit play, we're going to notice, or when I hit fight, we're going to notice that the behavior tree gets swapped out completely. And now we have the agent in the fighting behavior tree. So this, I guess in the scene view, they'll look a little off-centered, but they'll look a little bit better here. Uh, but that really doesn't matter. What matters here is that the subtree has been completely swapped out. It's a completely different subtree. There is no remnants of the fight subtree at all or the training subtree at all and that is because the yeah the the tree has been reevaluated and the new value has been returned with the new subtree so let's go ahead and take a look at this task one more time and this subtree reference selector we can see we have the two different subtrees the train and then the fight and then we also have some variables that are overridden actually a lot of different variables and the whole reason for that, again, is because of the project level assets cannot reference scene level assets. So this whole thing is done or is reevaluated when I hit this fight button. Well, the fight button, what actually happens is, it, is this code right here. So there, there's some, some activeness that is being set, but what we care about is this set variable variable value. So on both the agent, on, on both of the behavior tree agents that are doing the fighting, this subtree index that I had specified earlier, that shared variable, and we can see this shared variable is set right here. So index, subtree index, that's the shared variable. That gets set to a value of one so that the new subtree will be evaluated. And then when I call this reevaluate subtree references method, that's when the actual subtrees are swapped out. And so this is an extremely powerful way to kind of have new functionality at runtime. And that is how subtrees work. I highly recommend that you make the most use of them since they really can make your life easier.